When did you find out that you had ADHD? 2022. Whatever I could buy, I was buying. I was driving myself mad. I was never satisfied. I was losing my temper. I had that mentality of fuck everyone else. Whatever, I'm building this thing. Everyone else along the road, whatever, go and fuck yourself. I never thought I'd live past that 30 odd, man. Really? Yeah, why? Yeah, I don't know. I just always, I never seen myself living long, man. Cause my head was just so mad. I earned my first million young. I had this big build up to what it was gonna be and how it was gonna change my life. And when it never changed my life, it put me in a really dark place. Passionate, driven, raw, gritty, and hardworking are some of the words I would use to describe my next podcast guest, Mr. Tommy Mallet. In my conversation with Tommy, we cover being diagnosed with ADHD recently, being on TV, family, and of course, the world of business. Be happy, never content. This is one incredible episode. Right, welcome back to Steve Sully's study. Here is my second home, Woodbury House, and I've got a wicked guest in front of me, Mr. Tommy Mallet. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for agreeing the episode. And more importantly, what do you think about the gallery and the artist? First of all, thanks for having me. I like, just got in the end, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, the gallery is unbelievable. I just sitting there and said to my guys after I walked through, I need to start investing in a bit of artwork. But um, with me, when normally with art, I get a little bit lost into it because there's so much different stuff. But since I just had that walk through and now I'll focus on one artist. Yeah, man. Makes sense. I love it. Yeah, well, next week is the launch. I mean, by the time this comes out, the, the show would have been done. But uh, the return of the rap, Mr. Black the Rat, he's the original Banksy father of Stencil Graffiti. And I've got to tell you, I mean, his pieces are selling like hotcakes, mate. They're, mm. they're flying out the door. Anyway, I want to talk to you about business. I want to talk to you about your life. I want to talk to you about your profile. I want to talk to you about goals, ADHD. I want to cover it all. All of it. Um, on that note, you obviously got a very good personal brand. You've also got a very good... Business brand, mallets, trainers, clothing, etc. You've travelled all around the world. You've got a great family. Mm -hmm. You've got the nice toys. You've got X, Y, Z. Why do you still pursue doing podcasts like this to tell your story, Tommy? Well, what a question. Oh, um, I'm going to have to think about this. You're going to have to give me a second. One thing I do know, now if I get asked a question... I don't blurt out the answer straight away. I'll give my time, myself time to think about the answer. But, no, I don't have the answer to that one. I think you've done me. Have you ever seen this happen to me? Have you ever seen it happen to me? And since you've done me, he's just done me. I do not have the answer. Let me show. Um, fucking hell, Steve. What way to start? I think what I know the question. answer. I think I know the answer. Go on. The greatest way to receive is actually by giving. So yeah. the more you give and the more inspiration and wisdom that you give to the audience, you actually receive it back. That's why I think you do it. I've got the answer. So it started off when I had launched a brand and I'd just come off Towie. I weren't happy with the way that people thought, uh, that what people thought of me at the time. I'd just come fresh off the show um, I would just started the brand. I was pushing out the brand to people and people didn't understand who I actually was. It was what they was being shown from the show. And I was on the show for six, seven years. And you see two minutes of something that I was filming for half hour. And it's all in the hands of someone that's editing the show, yeah? Um, and there was so much more to me that people never knew. And I went and done one podcast, and the first podcast. And when I'd done that first one, that's when my career started. Because people actually see who I was as a person. And I was dropping little bombs in there. And people would stop me on the street and be like, oh my God, you changed my life. You said this. I looked into that. I'd done that. So then it was sort of like a bit of a release for me to get out there and help people. One thing I like doing is making sure I inspire people. That's, a, that's one of my main targets always. Especially when you get to the point where you feel like you've accomplished so much. Yeah? You've had the toys. You've had the money. You've had the success. What comes next? So for me, it was all about... How could I tell the story the same time so many times, but also keep up with what's going on around me? And just for some reason, every other week I've got something new happening. I've either got the diabetes scare that like I had, my ADHD's come. So every single time I'm learning something new, I'm just end up telling the story. And all of them become impactful and they just feel right. And also as well, it's not often that you get to sit down with like-minded people and have conversations. A lot of the time I'm in the office and... It's just talking about the goal, the goal, the goal. You end up, you don't really think where you're going at certain points because you're just so far on pushing. 
that's good to reflect and talk about stuff as well. That's another reason. But yeah, listen, not going to lie to you. That's probably one of the best questions anyone has ever asked me on a podcast. <laughs> I did say at the start of the podcast, I was analysing other conversations yeah, and yeah. I'm thinking, how can I call to this guy, throw him a bit of a curveball and, and do something a bit different? Yeah, that hit me. That hit me. I'll probably answer that at the end as well, to be honest. I need to think about that a little bit more. But yeah, every question, that cheers for that, mate. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I'm going to give uh, a quote uh, back to you that I, it hit me this morning. I listened to one of your interviews and I thought, Bly, blimey, that's a powerful, powerful quote that you, that you came up with or, or shared. Comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah. And that resonated with me so much because yeah. I've got to be honest, I'm 37 years of age. In some people's eyes, I've done well. In other people's eyes, I haven't done so well. I'm very self-critical. I know you are as well. Yeah. And thankfully, the blessing, the curse, I've got a lot of successful people around me. A mm -hmm. lot of my dad's mates or a lot of the people I know who live in my area, property developers, they've got hedge funds, they've got old, uh, care homes, old people's homes, etc. And they're flying. They're worth hundreds of millions, close to a billion and, and beyond. And that's a blessing, the curse, because sometimes I compare myself to them and think, at 37, they had this. Why haven't I not got that? No. At 39, they had this. Why, I'm not, why haven't I got that? And when I heard that, quote that you said this morning it really made me think about my own mindset sometimes you've got to enjoy the journey but what does that mean to you comparison is the thief of joy you know what so you know when i was in my 20s and i just started out let's go back to tally days when everyone was doing pas and everyone was getting if i go back to my tally days when i first started all I remember was me looking at what everyone else was doing around me, yeah? So people, who was getting the most club appearances, who was, who, was getting, who was driving the best motor, who was getting the most TVs, who was getting the most press, blah, blah, blah. I feel like the start of my 20s was the majority of the time I was doing that. And it was something that took over me for years. I was really, really just comparing myself, thinking, why am I not getting that? Oh, I deserve that. Why, am I, why is that not happening? But then when I started the brand off, I had my own thing going on, right? So then I was like, oh, you know what? I've probably gone four years without having nothing compared to what these people have. But the next four years, I've got my new niche. Let's see how it goes. Within two years, I just took over every, everyone I was around. I just went woof like that. So it made me look back. And I was thinking, if I had done this two years earlier and stopped comparing myself to all these other people, I'd be further in front of what I'm now. But then what happened was... I started comparing myself to other brands. So I'd get into Selfridges and I'd go, whoa, Gucci's got a better space than me. Well, they've got a bigger space than me. But then I'd done the same thing again. I ended up worrying about what everyone else was doing around me. And I didn't even notice what I was doing. So by the time I stopped comparing myself to other people, I turned around and I was like, wow, I've just missed the best time of my career. Because all I was doing was, I was being driven by other people. And that there, there's only so much materialistic stuff you can drive yourself on, Steve, yeah? Mm. So I'm like, if I'm comparing myself to the luxury brands, that I'm just basically just ended up someone's just so et up with what other people are doing, I'm forgetting why I started. So I got to the point where I was like, fuck what everyone else is doing. I don't care what anyone's doing. I don't care what they do. It's all about driving a brand. When I started doing that, that's when the results started going mad. I just felt like I was in my own league. And... The thing that really, really made me stop doing that and definitely stop comparing myself to other people is when I started feeling what it was like to have what they had. When I started getting the nice cars and that, I was like, well, this ain't even as good as I thought. I've fucking been driving myself mad for years to have what that geezer's got. And I don't even like it. Shit. So yeah, that's one of the quotes that definitely I stand on all the time. I don't compare myself to nobody. Because mm. I'm too volatile. To, I'm changing too much. I'm all over the shop. So like, by the time I... Compare that personality to him, I've changed, I'm a different person. It's definitely an important thing to make sure, definitely when you're in our game, what we're doing now, if, if something opens, opens opposite you, you end up getting obsessed with what they're doing, don't you? You end up taking your eye off the ball. And that's not what I'm about now. It's all about driving and making sure what I do is, like comes deep from within me. It's mm. not about because someone else is doing it. Mm. So, you know, that's, that's a big quote and I stand on that all the time. It's a great quote. I'm going to literally read it, read it pretty much every single day because it... it you know what? Like, as I've grown older, and it's a really weird thing to say, I've got now two kids, yeah? I've got yep. a four-year-old, Mason, and I've got a one-year-old, Logan. And I feel like since they've come along, I've actually felt a lot more pressure on me. And 
sometimes I feel like I've taken my off the ball, like mentally. But where, where, when they weren't here, it was almost like a bit more of a free spirit. And I almost had like, I don't give, give a fuck type of attitude, t- type of thing. Of Obviously I did, but I felt like I was a bit more brash, you know. Um, so those type of quotes and having these type of conversations and then listening to interviews that you've done and like-minded people like you brings me back in check and I think it's a really important thing to do. I fucked that quote up, man. I'm, I'm contradicting myself here. <laughs> I'm just realised as you said that, yeah, because as much as I don't do it in business and, and stuff like that, I do it in life now, I feel like. And I've only just thought of that as you were saying it. And especially when I had my little boy, because you'll know this more than anyone. You know when you have a kid yeah. and you're like, their mates are talking and their mates are walking and he's like, you're like, is he, is he a bit slow? Yeah, yeah. Is, 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 he, is he not learning? Oh, do you reckon the sand cup? I felt like I started doing that quite a lot and I missed quite a lot out of my little boy because of that. Because I'd be going, George, George, why is he still not talking? Why is he not walking yet? I, you start doing that. And then another thing what I started doing as well is comparing myself to other dads. Which, because even though I use that quote in business, in life, it ain't as easy because I beat myself up about working so much and I compare myself to other people. So I'm like, oh man, like, he's always with his boy on his Instagram. He's always got his kid around him. And I'm always in the office trying to make stuff happen to, to go forward. So mm-hmm. I still do compare myself to people a little bit, but not as much. I'd say more so in lifestyle now. That's the new thing that I'm really trying to conquer more than anything. I've, I, look, I, the thing is, with all these type of things, it is a constant daily habit reminder to yourself how you need to be. Mm. You know, that's why we keep going to the gym all the time. Mm. That's why we keep on using the ice bath all the time. Mm. That's why we do the sauna all the time. That's why we listen to personal development all the time. That's why we reflect on our vision board and stuff like, like that all the time. Because you don't just do it once and then you've got the perfect life. You've got to keep, and re- keep going. Re- reminding yourself. And that quote right there, it hit me where I thought, I veered off a couple of times already this year with the Mm. mindset, you know, and hearing small little nuggets like that can Mm. actually bring you back to focus. That's why we do the podcasts. That's it. Just answer the question. That's exactly why we do it. Rob, you just reminded me of that quote, to be honest, Shah. And now you've said it, I probably have been probably comparing a few things too much lately. Thanks for that. No no problem. So um, let's go back to, I know you've covered this plenty of times with other conversations, but being on a reality TV show such as Towie, yeah, you've made it a very smart business move. Mm-hmm. I can only I've only written down two other people from that show that springs to mind that have done pretty well. Mark Wright being one of them, and Jay Cole. You know he's also got a nice brand. But Joey, huh? Joey, Joey Essex. Joey Essex. Okay, yeah. And there's probably a, a couple others in there, but these are the natural ones that spring to my mind straight away. Was it on reflection now? Bit of a PR advertisement of yourself to build your profile and then to pivot into a brand that you've got today going on the show oh mate it was the only that was the only thing behind it it was like it was a few few reasons behind it one would have been obviously because i was young and i wanted to go and get hold of a load of birds and the other one was just i had an offer on the table at a time when it come and it was good timing and it was like i had nothing else going on and i tried a lot and there was a few routes that I could have went down and this was one of them. So I just picked this route and I went on there straight away. Probably, I've said it so many times, I probably went on there and thought I was going to follow in Joey's, Joey and Mark's footsteps. Because yeah. I had a little bit about me and it was a bit different and it never happened. So it was like, it hit me quite fast that I weren't never going to be like this TV guy because I was different. Didn't I? I spoke different carried myself a little bit different. I was probably a little bit more aggressive in certain ways because obviously it's just the way I was. And I remember my old man saying to me, if you do the show, you need to make sure that you leave this show because it will stop soon, right? And you've got something to at least get a few quid of. So we was like done a few things. It was like we had the club at one point, like a few of the olders had and I got looked after and brought in on that. Um, I had a few little ventures. I started, do you know what? The show put me in the, in the position where I started meeting people at had big dough random. And I started seeing people who had decent businesses and I sort of, that inspired me a bit more, definitely. But the show was like, when I got on there, I was like, I'm on here, 22. I'm being paid to go out boozing every night. I am go to Spain a couple of times a, a year to film and we're gonna have a little blast of it. And the first few months, six months was a lot of fucking about, but then it really got into me about shit, you know what, I have to do something here. Cause I, the comparison thing, I was comparing myself to all these other people who had a few quid on there and I had nothing. I was like, I have to do something here. So I'd done it really more so anything. One, because I was lost to start off with. 
And number two was to build a profile so I can go and like, take what I wanted to do further. And looking back, it was the best thing I've ever done. The best thing I've ever, ever done. It was got like, I've got no, no, a lot of people try and get rid of that stigma of coming from reality TV. I don't. I use it as like a strong part in my journey of, I developed so much from doing it. I was like, didn't know how to hold myself when I started that show. When I first started Mallet Off and I actually went to the bank, uh, the meeting to go and set the bank account up, we had a, a bring in with like quite a high up guys in the bank so we could get a decent business account. And the way I turned up to that meeting, I actually sit back now and I think, wow, I had nothing about me like business wise. I walked in there in gym bits, was like, put my foot up on the table probably. Talking about big geezers here, like could have give us good opportunities. And at the time, I was so far from where I am now, I didn't know how to handle that sort of stuff. So being on a show probably give me the amount, I've done a lot of traveling, I met a few more like people and, and it prepped me for where I am today. So I'm really, I'm proud of myself for doing it. I don't, I'm not like these people that need to start trying to raise parts of their story. Yeah. It's not our role, but yeah, answer the question. It was always something to leapfrog into the next thing. Did I know what I was going to go and do it in? Definitely not. I didn't know what day it was at the time. I was fucking off my head. But when I look back on it, it really did plan out well for me, that show. So am, am I right in saying that you made your debut on there at 2014? Yeah, 14, yeah. So this is like at the start, kind of for a few years of Instagram, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've had a few reality TV stars, mostly from things like Love Island, et cetera, on the show, Jack Fincher and a bunch of other people. And I always ask the same question. And it's probably more concentrated for something like a reality TV show such as Love Island rather than something which is regularly on, on going, yeah, such yeah, as yeah. Towie or Made in Chelsea, which is this. Do you remember, do you recall when you went into the show with Instagram and then coming off the show after a few weeks, a few months, how your profile suddenly it was bloomed mad. up. What mad. was that like? And what was the numbers? Do you know what? My first story that ever come out of me, yeah, was I had, I, I come onto a show in Ibiza, which was a bad idea for me because I'd just done like a month out there. And I was, at the time I was heavy. I was, I'd go in out there and I'd, my debut was on the show. And I went out there and caused absolute mayhem. None of it really got showed on Tower either. But the first picture that ever come out of me was me, like, I'll never forget me getting off a of sun lounge just to jump into the pool, yeah? The reason I was jumping off the sun lounge to get into the pool, because I had been filming and I got so lagging at filming with Arge, I was sick all over myself, right? So my first ever thing was me doing that. And I'll never forget, it was Tommy Mallet is set to be a hit. That's what my first bit of press was. And I had, so like 2,000 followers, I think I had 50,000 within the first month or something. It's nowhere near Love Island because it's more like- Spread out. It's spread yeah. out. But when I started Mallet Off the summer after, so I went on to Tawi September, 2014. I started Mallet in June, 2015. So it took me all that time to get launched. When I think about it, I've done it really fast. But I think I had 250 when I launched Mallet. So it took me that amount of time to get a quarter of a million followers. But back then the interaction on social media was much more than what it was now. If you had 100,000 followers, you could get 70,000 likes in a picture. Yeah. That was mad how fast that all happened. And as more reality shows come out, it started getting harder and harder and harder to, to carry on. But um, yeah, no, I remember, I remember it being a bit mad. I remember all of a sudden it was like, mate, I had some mad, mad messages I was getting and stuff like that. So it took me a while to get used to her. But then because Towie Sank which just carried on for so long, he sort of get used to it, innit? I lived my 20s on that show. But it ain't nothing like Love Island. Like, I think Jack and that come out and had what? He went in there with like nothing. He come out with like 2 million followers or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's mad. I didn't really get that part in my journey. That didn't happen for me. And what he said to me is he's basically shielded from the, 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 the real world. Yeah. And then he came out and the guy said to him, when you turn this corner, there's going to be... 50,000 screaming fans, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, li your life is now going to be different. And the moment he walked, went around there, obviously checked his phone, he's got millions of followers. Mad. He just said it was completely overwhelming. Yeah. It was just crazy. I'm going to take you back. That so, never happened to me though. So that's the lucky thing. So I think, so So am I right in saying, because it was like staggered. Got eased yours. into it. I was eased into it. And obviously it was mad. I go and do a club appearance and there'd be a few hundred people there, but sometimes I'd get there and be no one there. 
different for us lot than Love Island. Like, Towie is not as impactful as Love Island, but it just lasts longer. Mm. It's a bit of a different, it's a different structured thing. But yeah, I, I've never had that like mad fame thing that they're not ads. Yeah. I, when you came to our launch yeah. in December, I yeah. briefly said this to you. So we actually met in Dubai. So I was with a friend of mine. I remember, called, I remember, I remember, I remember. I met you. I met you in that beach club, in it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. So you were there with Jeff, uh, Jessica Wright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ours was there, but he kind of was. What well, he he was there, but he wasn't really there. He was doing doing something else. Um, uh, Jessica's uh, mum and dad. Her dad wasn't there, but her mum was there, and there was a few others. And I was with Joe Simpson, my former business partner Mike, and also uh, Reese Ramsey and a few others. And I'll tell you the reason why I recap the story. We started chatting very, very briefly. It was me, you, and maybe Joe. And me and you was, were chatting. And you turned, it was 2015 or 16, and you turned around to me and was like, I'm going to launch this club. A month before. Yeah, I'm going to launch this club. And I remember walking away from you, and I'm in sales, right? So I try and pick up a lot of like people's attitude, tonality, et cetera. And they say, when you define a sale in a pie chart, this is one of the books I read, half of a sale, so if a sale happens, half of that sale is down towards the person's attitude. So if you've got a wicked attitude, you can convert someone because you've just got a great attitude. Mm. It's the transfer of enthusiasm. Of course it is. And then the other quarter, which is now makes up 75%, is tonality. And I walked away from you, and I didn't actually engage in everything you said, but I was like, fuck me, this guy's got so much belief in charisma <laughs> in what I'm saying. I sort of bought into you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I was yeah. like, he's going to make it. Like, yeah, he's going to yeah. make it. And I didn't really hear too much about the club so much, but then I started seeing mallets and I was like, no, no fucking surprise. Like he's got so much. So where's this like confidence and this raw kind of brashness almost to, 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 to like the way you think and the way you feel and your determination? I remember that I was 22 and I was actually, it was March, 2015 that was. I got photographic memory and it was in Cove and there was a few of you in there. I remember you had a Rolex on. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We were chatting and I was like, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was 22. And I had the first ever sample pair of mallets on, right? And what happened was, is the club was the thing that gave me the money to get through to go and start mallet. So I didn't have to work for any other brands. I didn't have to go and do no club appearances. I got brought in on the club. I had the, the Friday was my night at the club. Saturday um, was like a group thing. And I started earning really good money for it. And that gave me the, that gave me the time to be able to go and work on mallet. And I remember telling you, because I had the first ever samples when I said that, Char. I remember it like it was yesterday. Powerful. Yeah, and, and it comes from, I don't, I don't know where it comes from. It's mad because I could never answer the question in, in the same, same thing. It's like, I just know that if it's been done before, I can do it. There's no one telling me that I can't. No one on this planet can tell me nothing. And I'm not being flash. I promise you, I'm not being flash because that's not me. I just know that I can do it. It don't matter. It don't matter. If, if, if someone has done something, why can't I do it? Facts. Why? Someone fucking invoke, inv made this microphone, that light bulb. Why can't I make a trainer brand? There's nothing stopping me. The background definitely can't stop me because that's giving me the morals to go and do it. It's giving me the hunger to go and do it. Um, the ADHD, which I thought then was dyslexia, definitely can't stop me doing it because I'm thinking outside the box. And I've not been educated, so I'm not going to go and have any limits towards anything I've ever done. So no one can fucking tell me nothing. I'll go and get whatever I want. I'll take what I want and I'll get it as fast as I want. As long as I'm willing to go and put my mind to it. And I've had that for, 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 for years and it will never stop. And the more I get, the more that I'll get more in tune with it. But I'm not greedy. I've got my goals now and I don't drive myself mad on times. I just know that I'm going to go and do it. So the story's already ripped for me, man. I don't feel like there's any changes need to be done at the moment. And I knew that that time when I told you that. I always knew. I remember seeing, because I'll never forget this. I'm going to say how it was. One of your pals had an RM on, yeah? And I, had the, I always used to put that down to success. It was a Red Richard Mill and it had a... It was a it was Rose an Gold R, one. Yeah, and RM11, yeah, I think yeah, it was, yeah? yeah Mike. And that, I think yeah. that was the first one I'd ever seen, yeah? And I, all you boys, I remember seeing all you boys, and I'm 30, so I was 29 then. Use what was having it. I remember seeing that. And that was what I, that, was, that inspired me then. It was, a, it was a thing for me, but it never made me jealous because I always knew I was going to have it. Do you know what the weird, the weird thing is though as well? Because there was other guys there who had nice stuff. And th this is going to sound very gay, but 
I'm not I'm not looking at people's stuff. It was the attitude. It was a tonality. It was that that drive. Mm. I was like. That, that, that's infectious. Yeah, yeah, it's mad. It's, it's it? like when you listen to Conor McGregor, when you listen to a Mayweather, when you listen to a Mike Tyson, it's infectious. Yeah. You might not be being an MMA fighter. You might not be a boxer. You might not be pursuing building a brand in, in, in shoe wear or, or, or clothing, but it's the attitude. It's the personality. It's the characteristics. That's infectious. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to be around these type of people. Yeah, Hence why I wanted to do this podcast with you yeah, because yeah. I feel selfishly, I could listen back to this as many times and get a lot of, lot of lot of lot of um a feel good factor for it and a lot lot of lessons and i know it's going to serve me and hopefully the audience for for many many years hence why i wanted to i think get the main on. thing in this is yeah is did you see how i've i have over these last few years can you imagine the people i've met doing fashion week and traveling the world i remember that day like it was yesterday yeah i don't forget people and i don't forget moments and when i'm building to go forward i always look back at the moments and the way i was feeling and back then, when I meant at that day, I'll never forget. I see all these boys having it, and I was like, "Whoa, yeah, I need to get some of this. How quick can I get like this?" Now I've got stores in Dubai that are smashing it. I've got all over Saudi. I've got stores. I've got, I've got stores everywhere. But them little moments are the keys that makes me like push further. Do you know what I mean? And the drive I had then, I've still got now, and I've achieved everything that I set out to achieve back then. I still want more, and I've still got exactly the same push in me to go and get it. And the confidence thing is like, as you just said, the same people, always the same people you look at, isn't it? It's McGregor, it's uh, Mayweather. They're all so confident they're gonna do it. How can you How can you not believe them? How can you? So if I'm launching a product and I'm so confident this is gonna work, after a while you will believe it's gonna work. Exactly what I've done to you that day. Yeah. Mad that, isn't it? Yeah. And do you know what? It, it, it solidifies that lesson or that, um, a bit of advice that everyone gives everybody else, but it's very, very hard to do it sometimes, which is be present and be in the moment and enjoy the moment. Because them little conversations, mm. if you're not in that moment and aware of those conversations, how you're feeling, thinking and being present, it will go by you 100%. and you won't remember it and you won't be able to reflect on it. Um, I'm really impressed with the way you've smashed business. I'll tell you why. Comparing something like here to what you do, You've got it, in my mind, very, very difficult and you smashed it because we take someone's product and take it to the market and sell it to collectors, investors and art fanatics. You do the same thing, but you've got to take your own product, which yep. you've got to design. Yep. You know, you've got to think about, you've got to look at the material, you've got to be competitive. Yep. It's a super, super hard thing to do. There's marketing, there's advertisement, there's branding, there's production, there's design. I mean, like, how do you spin in so many plates, Tommy? Um, I think it's a little bit different now because I've can hire the best people in the industry. That that helps now because I've got to the point where I can bring people in and get the help. But I think it's it's not hard when you're doing it. When you're doing it, it don't seem hard. It's just feel like you've got the vision and the vision's that, so you need to get there. It don't matter how the fuck you get there, you got to get there. So you just try and everything. Everything's just try and every yeah. And starting mallet. It was, no, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed to say, I'm not out there trying to be one of these desired brands that are recreating the wheel. It's not what I've done. I didn't do that with Mallet. I went and took a product that was there, made it affordable, and made it my own way, and dropped Sank at the right time and made it work. And I've stood on that for the whole time, yeah? I'm not out there trying to be the next Gucci. That's not what I want to be. I just want to be there. I want to be accessible and I keep going. I look up more to Hugo Boss than I do Gucci. Because Gucci's been going up and down for years. Hugo's always been like that. You know, you see them geezers that you just always seen where Hugo Boss and them like normal brands. That's what I've always gone out to achieve. I want to make something steady, sustainable and keep going, yeah? And along the journey, it's like, because the business started off and it was only a few of us, I never had overheads. I never had these investors behind me. I was like trial and error. So if I got a product, the product that people are seeing, it's like an artist, yeah? or even like a, a singer. I'll deliver a product and it'll be the number one seller for two years, yeah? I've done a hundred products behind that, but only one of them worked. That's how I made this happen. I'd sit there and I will design hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shoes. Mm. And, I'd, and I'd wait until I get them made and then one of them will hit off and then I'll go onto the marketing story of that shoe. Do you know what I mean? So that's how I've done it. And when I look back at it, 
I can't believe what I've actually achieved with such, such less, I had no experience in it. It was literally everything I've done. And I promise you, I might have made it look a little bit easy in certain places. I never had a clue what I was doing. Every single move I have made has been a guessing game. I never admitted that. Everything I've done has been a calculated guess. That's it. There's been no special formula behind what I've done. It's just the consistency of how I've done it. And the mindset, which you reminded me of, like I had back then. It weren't going any other way of not working. So I'd make the product, I'd market the product, I'd then work out how the fuck I'm going to get them made. And then when they started really having it off, how I was going to get the money to fund the shoes to get them even made. All of them things, it was all thinking on the spot because it all moved so quickly. And I feel that's the beauty of building a business like this. Mm. I didn't stop to second think. Just like, bang, let's just do it. So I think it all comes down to it's consistency, taking risks, definitely taking risks. Risk is the way forward, man. If you don't take risks, you're not going to get any results out of it. It's like, if I wouldn't have took risks, I would have just made a plain white trainer and I would have got nowhere. Um, and the self-belief thing, man. Self-belief thing is definitely the way forward. Yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, I've got people in my organisation that have different skill sets to me. My, my business partner, Joe, I've got to say that, you know, he's a great businessman, puts, puts uh, processes in place. Whereas that's not really my skill set. My, mine's a bit more like energy, doing content, doing sales, etc. Is there anyone in your organisation that you feel like you can lean on and, I don't know, you, you, you synergise with? Yeah, um, everyone. I feel like the, the way that we've built the team now is definitely, I can lean on everyone and I'll pull someone out of marketing and bring them into a design meeting. And I'll bring, it's, it, all, all things like that, I feel like I've built a team so I can lean on everyone. But with me, I have sort of built, I've built a thing about where I, can, I sort of have a dip in everything. I don't really have no speciality no more. Where it first started, I was sort of, I'll do a bit of design and then a bit of marketing. But now I've sort of learned the inside out of the business because I've been there from the start to finish. So we all lean on each other when it comes to building the brand. But I've got the confidence now that I've, I don't know at all, but I know a, a, a big part of it. That makes my job a lot harder because I'm also like a big critic of other people's work. Do you know what I mean? Because I always feel like I can do things better. That's the part where it ends up becoming a bit sticky. But the way that I've built my team up, we've built my team up, me, me, and, me and my partner, is we've brought people on who understand the company. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So the people who work for me, they care so much about the brand, yeah? So I can lean on them about anything. So everyone's, everyone's opinions are taken on board for everything throughout the brand. So if I turn up to a meeting, I normally turn up a few people. They don't speak. When I finish the meeting, I'll say, how do you think that went? And I'll analyze it and get their opinions after. Do you get what I mean? Mm. Is that a really bad way to answer that question? No, it's great. When you're, when you're, the whole, the whole way this works is it's all on the spot, yeah? So the last thing that I need is to think of saying, I need to just get out of my head. And sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. So sometimes I can't ask someone's opinion on things because it just needs to happen on the spot. Most of the time it works, sometimes it don't. But I've got a lot of people around me who I can sort of analyze things with and work out. Do you think this is the best way to do it? Talk to my partner. What do you think on this? And a lot of the time, yeah, we lean, we lean on each other. But because of the intensity of me, a lot of it just comes out just quick. We just think on the spot. And I think the same is with the team. Mm. Also, where you're like hungry and determined and ambitious and... You're basically obsessed with your own own brand and becoming and 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 that becoming the the most successful it can be. I guess you feel it feel you have to respond very very quickly. You know, time success doesn't wait for anybody, so you have to make the on the spot decision right then. Yeah, that and also the the main part of why things have to happen quickly and it's definitely because my ADHD. If I don't get out of my head and make the decision on the spot, I can't sit there and overthink about it because I fuck it up. So. Once I get asked a question, I probably don't, I, I don't, I never really sleep on things. I just make it happen straight away. I feel like a lot of the success has come from that because you can overthink, can't you? Of course you can. I don't do that. No chance. Like if I overthink it, I'm out of it. I'm fucked that. I'm on to the next thing. So everything has to be now, now, now with me. I feel like I'm getting a little bit older. As I get a little bit older, I'm probably calming down a little bit. But 
if I'm going to view a property, yeah, and I've got 10 lined up and I like the first one, I'm taking the first one. I'm exactly the same. Like, I'm relocating the store at the minute. We went and found the store. I walked in and I was like, yeah, this is ours. And the woman was like, do you want to look at more? I was like, no, talk this one out. Straight away. And I feel like that's where a lot of the success does come from. It's so fast thinking, man. Look, it can work against you a lot of the time, innit? Because what if, what if property five was better than property one and you just beat it up? That's just how my mindset is. You need to keep it moving, move fast, get the deal done. So yeah, yeah, it is very, very fast. When you think about it, every deal that's ever been done has been with a matter of weeks. So like America went from being nothing for years to having something done in days. Australia, days, Canada, days. It was just all so fast. And I feel like where, that's my mindset that probably pushes it to happen like that. I don't like email chains. I don't like people dragging their reels. I don't like people having a meeting to have a meeting. Fuck that. Get in the office. Let's get it done together. Let's work. And all my team are like that now. Mm. I feel like that's where the success might come from. It's like, say to my guys, yeah, you don't always have to focus on big wins. Ain't always got to be a big win. See them small wins to keep the team clapping. They're the ones. You know, like a little article there where everyone's like, yes, bang, what's next? Bang, 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 bang. I'm like, let's go. That's what drives it. That's, that's what's built the brand. Them like taking little small wins and building them up to the big ones. That's what it is. Yeah. You know what? I can relate to that this morning. So my podcast last, uh, last week came out with Kieran Richardson, a former footballer for Man United and also England now turn to a watch dealer. And the son wrote about it this morning, credited me. Now mm. I'm not getting any money off that and it's not going to blow up my podcast straight away. But do you know how good that made me feel? It's a small, yeah, it small was win. 5.30 in the morning, Kieran sent me, uh, sent me the link and he was like, oh, it's made the sun. And I know it's not the best paper out there, but that small little win, I, I, God's honest truth, it felt like I just won a million pounds. Do you know what that is? Because it releases endorphins in your brain. Serotonin. What you want. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly what it is. And like the big wins, they last a little bit longer than the small wins. But I'm like, and this is gonna sound mad, I'm like a crackhead, man. Yeah. I'm not after just getting one one big thing and then just like sitting there and being content with it. I don't have any that in my body, as I've said before. I just need that buzz every day. And if I don't get that buzz every day, I feel like shit, man. I actually can't handle life without it. Do you know how mad that sounds? Mm. So I AD need that. ADHD then, let's talk about that. Yeah. I was diagnosed with that ADHD um, 2019 roughly. When did you find out that you had ADHD? 2022, so about July last year. And why did you go in and get tested for it? Uh, because mom, I just literally went to a different level of where I was always a bit different and a bit like, ah, things like that. But it started getting the impulse behind it, started getting absolutely mad. Like buying maddest things, cars, whatever I could buy, I was buying. I was driving myself mad. I was never satisfied. I was aggressive. I was losing my temper. I had that mentality of fuck everyone else, whatever. I'm building this thing. Everyone else along the road, whatever. Go and fuck yourself. And I become a person that I don't feel like sat well with definitely who I was. And I didn't know I was becoming an animal, but I was. And I had about another week in me and I would have lost it all. I would have lost my family. And if I'd have lost my family, I would have lost my company because I wouldn't be able to do anything without them. So me and Georgia went down a really bad path and she made me get tested for it. And when I got tested for it, I was always thought ADHD was sank where it was just kids that was naughty running around, drinking loads of Coca-Cola, like things like that. I didn't realize that it could bring on so much other stuff, man. And when until I started researching, I was like, you know what, maybe this does it could be me, you know? So I went and got tested for it. And remember, as I was getting tested, all I was thinking about is I really hope they tell me I've got it so I can get this fixed. And I went there and the guy was like, wow. <laughs> wow. You're on, the, you're on the top of the scale for both of them. And because they've done two tests, I come uh, top of the scale for both of them. He's like, I have to test you for autism as well. I ain't got autism. I've just got really bad ADHD. Um, and it's got worse as I got older. So, yeah, finding out that was just like a game changer, man. And I feel like a lot of the success, especially over the last six months, is because I've actually been able to slow down a little bit and see what's around me. And, yeah, I, I nearly lost it all. Mad. Everything went. I was at the top of my... I was at like the peak of where I could be, yeah? More money than ever. I just got engaged. I had a little baby. 
and I everything was sweet. I had no reason for me to not feel content at that point. Yeah. I just could have turned around at one point and went, you know what? All fouls of the brand done all right here, you know? Everything's sweet. But I couldn't. I was like more ambitious than ever. But in a certain way, I was aggressive with it. It was like, you, I had, you had to tell me what I wanted to hear. And if you didn't, we was falling out. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. And I was like, I feel like I started getting to the point where that fuck, like, don't take no for an answer. Fuck you mentality what would always work in business sort of followed me home. And when it followed me home, it started pulling my world apart. Mm. And I was having murders with every member of my family, man. I threw, like, my mum and dad threw them out the ass, get out of my ass. Misses I have murders with, couldn't take the crying of the baby indoors, making bad business, business decisions, I think, because I was just so overwhelmed with everything. And I didn't know what ADHD was. So when I actually went and got tested for it, a life changer, because I realised that was something I could do. And I weren't an absolute lunatic. I was actually had something that could be fixed. So fixing that's probably my best achievement to date. Because now I'm in such a better place mentally that I never thought I'd pray to be in this position I'm in now, man. Mm. And I went and got it fixed. And now I feel like work and home is two different things. And I know how to do that. And I also know how to wake up in the morning and regulate my mood to whatever it needs to be. Um, and I, I learned to accept a little bit more now where I didn't have that before. I didn't, you know, sometimes you wake up and you always feel like the world's on your shoulders. Mm. I had that for so long to the point where I was caught handle it, man. Like I, some of the thoughts I had years ago was mental, man. Now I fixed it. I'm like, I'm just happy. I'm happy. I have um, shit days, but I'm still happy. You know, a lot of stuff you're saying is resonating with me because there are some days when I get up and it sh I should be super, super happy and super on it. And I just feel like not sometimes. Um, it's usually when I don't go to the gym or yeah. it's usually when I miss the ice bath or it's yeah. usually when I miss the, the sauna because I say to myself, I've not done that. So I failed the morning. Therefore, the rest of the day is going to fail. Yeah. I don't say that, but, but you know. it's, kind of, it's kind of what I'm feeling. Yeah. Um, but in other days, like this morning, that small little text I got from Kieran, we're in the sun today. It's like, wow, like I feel, feel amazing. I knew today was going to go really well. Obviously, looking forward to this. Had a few good meetings with collectors. I feel like on top of the world. But today, today is no different to yesterday. Yep. And I always ask myself, why? Why am I going through that? The um, emotional part of your brain, yeah, but, and, and it's also the impulse part of it as well. But you need to put yourself into the position of, what if that day's a one-off and it ain't going to be here tomorrow? Mm. Does that mean you're just not going to have a good life for the rest of your life? Where mm. does it stop? Mm. So I was in that ice bath every single day. I had to be in it a certain time every single day. I had to pull myself out of it. So I was like, what if I go away and I've not got that ice bath to do it? Why well, have I always got to chase the next thing? Why is it always about that, that next kick? How can't I just get to a point where I'm content waking up every morning and just being able to just motivate myself without having to do these things to get short, short little things? So I cut out coffee. So I don't, I don't drink any caffeine and I try and min, like have minimal sugars and also processed foods in it. I don't touch anything processed really. Um, I eat quite organic, which I'm lucky enough to be able to afford to do. I know obviously you can't take this advice because a lot of people can't. Um, that's just me being lucky that like I can go and do that. But that was a big thing for me. It was like, you can't live your life just having to celebrate these wins, man. And I'm still trying to work out how to not do that so you can be happy, but... When I went and got tested for ADHD, yeah, the guy was like, what do you want? I was like, I want to be happy. He was like, how are you going to get happy? I was like, I need to do this, this and this. He was like, no, 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 no. Happiness comes from within. So I dropped a few stone, fit as a fiddle. Now I feel happy. For the first time in a long time, I feel happy. I feel like I missed so much in my life, man. I, like, I missed a lot. And I, one day my little boy will watch this and he might feel a bit bad, but I missed the whole part of him being born, really, man. I weren't there. I don't feel like I was there. I was just thinking about getting that next fix in my head, the next achievement to make me feel better. Mm. But stop being a selfish fucker and realise there's more to life than achievements, man. We've got it all. We've got it all. Being here is having it all. Sitting in there together and being able to have conversations having it all. Do you know what I mean? I had pals that died young. Why the fuck am I waking up every morning like the world's on my shoulders like a mm. victim? I ain't a victim. Got a nice gaff. 30. I've smashed it. I've got a kid. What about the, the man in the wall next to you, man? When you're when you're getting the 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 
then you're having a scan done and, there's a, and you have to walk past someone in the hospital who's just lost one of their kids or something. They ain't getting a heartbeat in the scan. All of them things, yeah, you take for so for granted. It's fucking unbelievable. We're tearing our heads away. We are actually fucking breaking our heads apart because we feel like we have to just get that next dopamine boost, yeah? But then when I had the baby, I missed that part. I admit that I did miss that part. And when I proposed to Georgia, I missed that part. I can't remember doing it. Because all I wanted to do is get out of that place because I felt like people was looking at me and I needed to get the next thing. I've done that one. What was the next thing? I missed out so much in my life, man. I've missed out on so much. And I'm gutted because when I look back at it, I missed out on the majority of my 20s. I missed out on this big journey that I fucking, that I've set out to do. Because I was the whole time just trying to find the next thing. And when I was having the baby, yeah, it was the first thing, when Georgia was pregnant in 2020, it was the first thing that actually made me realise it. When I realised how hard it was to, for someone to have a baby, yeah, that's what made me start really realising it. Because it was something that you think so simple, isn't it? Mm. And the whole nine months, I was so paranoid about, oh, like, I hope the baby's healthy. And when I was in the hospital, I'd seen a lot of people was getting bad news or I was sitting, going, sitting down with a lot of people who couldn't have babies because you're having a baby chat. That sort of gave me a bit of a kick up the arse. I was like, whoa, that's actually the smallest things, yeah? But we think are small are actually the biggest things out there. Being healthy, having kids, being able to fucking eat even is such a big thing. So why the fuck do we wake up every morning so selfish, man? Do you know what I mean? Mm. How's shit's life for sitting in your sauna this morning texting each other? Fucking wallies, mate. We are wallies. When you think about it, we're still not content with that. And I know we, you need to be content to carry on. And it's just, you, you need to not be content to carry on because I've always lived by that. But where is the end goal here, man? Where are we going? Think about that. Where the fuck are we going? We've had it all, yeah? Everything we've got out to do, we've got that young 22 year old who met you on that beach that time. All we wanted was to be me four years ago. Mm. But these last four years have been hell for me because it weren't enough. Mm. Mad, isn't it? Crazy. And it's not, not until you look back and you're in this position to actually sit there and analyze it, you realize it's the comparisons of FIFA joy, man. It is. Isn't it, it really is. It really isn't is. It? When you explain it like that, it's not everyday things, it's the comparison of where you feel like you should be. But when you sit back and think where you actually are, then wow, man, we prayed for this sort of lifestyle we've got now, isn't it? No, it's crazy, mate. Isn't it? Crazy. And that, that's what brings on a lot of this depression and anxiety is because the next, it's always about the next thing. And I feel like I'm starting to lose that a little bit, but not in a way where I'm starting to go backwards within business. I'm looking at things so different now. Now I've had help. And I'm like, all right, to the team, listen, this is what we need to do to go forward. How are we going to get there? And someone will go, that's going to take six months. I'd normally go, fuck off, that ain't, we ain't doing that. We're going to go another way. And I'd normally fuck it up because I wouldn't like, wait the six months. But since getting help, six months goes quite quick. Oh, so quickly. So quick, yeah. Three months into this year. Exactly. And I've achieved more in these three months than I ever have in my whole life, yeah. But if someone told me it was going to take me three months, six months ago, I'd have went, no, it's too long. I'm not accepting that. And I would have fucked it up. So now I've learned that timing's everything and you can sit back and you can actually process and the more you process things the better off you are mm. and that's the main achievement with this adhd help that i've had don't have to have it all yesterday you can wait and you can build things up because when it comes it's better and that's where i feel like i might be waking up a bit more happier because i've got a little bit more structure because unless you've got it and you actually understand it them mornings are dark man mm. you know when you wake up and you don't know if you're gonna have a good day or shit day mm. Can't look your missus in the eye, can you? Mm. Yeah. It's normally when I'm, like I said, when I miss the gym, I get up, I, I lay in, I feel a bit tired. I, I, be, I become a little bit of a bitch of a guy, I can't yeah. bother go to, go yeah. to the gym. I have another hour and a half in bed. I wake up, I don't feel actually more refreshed. Yeah. And I, then it starts playing on my mind. Yeah. And I think, oh my God, I'm a fucking failure this morning. Yeah. How's today going to pan out? And I go into the day with a bit of a negative attitude. Mm -hmm. Whereas, fucking who gives a shit? Like, I've done that yeah. this morning. Yeah. So I, I slept in an extra hour and a half this morning. I didn't train. Feel brand new today. This was six months ago. Mm. Don't even bother trying to talk to me. Because I realise it don't always have to be full on all the time, man. Mm. So I, I look at it different now. And this is the only way I can explain it is, yeah. You see before it was every hour it had to be like full on. I can look back at a week now and go, all right, did I train enough in the week? All right, sweet. I didn't train on Wednesday. I trained on Saturday or Sunday. 
I had a bit of a lay in. Oh, sweet, don't worry, I'll just get up, I'll get up early tomorrow. That there is something that I've learned, especially after getting this help from ADHD. I don't let nothing ruin my day no more, man. Mm. So I, I have to pull myself out of it. You, you mentioned earlier, like dark times and thoughts. I mean, are you alluding to the fact that suicidal thoughts crept into your mind? No. Well, no, it never. But dark thoughts of, of to me, a dark thought, yeah, is when you can't snap out of something is a dark thought. When you're sitting there all day and you just cannot snap out of this dark cloud in your head, that's dark, man. Mm. That ain't so much suicide because I don't feel like I really got to this place of that. But I was always in the spot, man, where I was like, fuck, nothing's working. Ah, ah, why do I feel shit today? When I earned my first million, yeah, and I was young. I earned my first million young, what, what, what I think's young. And I had this big build up to what it was going to be and how it was going to change my life. And when it never changed my life, it put me in a really dark place. That's actually what pushed me into my darkest place. Because I had been chasing this goal for so long. And when I got there, I was like, well, fucking hell. What have I been chasing this for? What do I chase now? That was dark for me. I have to consider that dark because I had nothing to strive for no more. And you hear fury in that sound, innit? You see when you see these people still fighting because when they've got nothing to fight for, what do they do? Give up. And I was there when I started earning proper money. But now, my, my form of like where I get my happiness from, yeah, is, and it sounds mad, being in the office with my team, man, and just everyone buzzing about the brand. That does it for me. Knowing that people are just giving up and like giving up other things in their life to build this for me. That gives me the buzz. So all the dark thoughts are gone now and I don't get them no more. But I have woke up a lot of times, man, and I've got the world on my shoulders and I think, fuck, is this worth it? How much further can I go like this? Is this me? Is this me forever? Am I going to have to deal with this for my whole life? Because I don't know if I've got it in me. That's the thoughts I've had, I feel. I've never sat there and thought, oh, I'm going to go and kill myself. But I've actually sat there and thought to myself, fuck, is this the person I've got to be in? I've got to be in this head this my whole life. Another 50 years, I don't think I'm going to do it. I never thought I'd live past like 30 odd, man. It's a weird feeling that, isn't it? Really? Yeah, why? Yeah, I don't know. I just always, I never seen myself living long, man. Because my head was just so mad. I was like, I don't feel like my mind would be able to go this for this amount of time. But then when I had the baby and I started like thinking things different, I end up really re like thinking about my life further and thinking, shit, when I'm 60 and my little boy's like 30, da, 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 I started getting a little bit of a different mindset. And I feel like it's just been over the years I've sort of pulled myself out of that place and I've learned a bit more. The ADHD is a big one, man. As much as everyone thinks it's ADHD is just saying where it's going to you're going to be a bit hyperactive and you're going to be a bit impulsive. It's not, man. It can pull you through some of the darkest places you've ever seen, man. I would like to actually be connected to, to this person because I was diagnosed with it, but it was just diagnosed. You've got it. And I've never really looked into how to kind of channel it. Mm. I know there are certain traits that I've got which are clear as day and there's other things that are probably more hidden. So I'd definitely like to maybe pick your brain a bit more about it. If me and you worked together, it'd be a disaster. <laughs> and I thought that as soon as I went through that thing upstairs with you, but wow, you're so much like me, man. So much like me. It's fucking mad how much you're like me. And and I said to you earlier, when I watch your stuff, I've never I've never thought about it when I've seen you on camera. But in person, you're so much like me, man. The energy, it's, right? It's uncomfortable, isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's mad. I think this is a good little uh, segue into uh, the conversation, the story that you shared with your audience some time ago, which definitely moved me. And you reminded me about it in one of your recent podcasts, which is the Freddy story. Oh, yeah. And I, I've got to be honest, there's not many things, there's n nothing I don't think I've ever cried to. And I didn't cry to that. But if I wanted to push myself to tears, yeah. I could have easily done it because yeah. it was such a moving story. And it's stuff like that that solidifies what we just spoke about, about being grateful and thankful about the life that we got right now. Because when you're faced with a scenario like Freddie was, God bless him, it's like all the stuff that we think we care about, the cars, the watches, the, the holidays, the whatever, it just all falls away. And it's about the communications, the, the conversations. Like, I've got a friend of mine who's got um, two garages and he also has got 120 properties, right? And he's a bit older than me and I consider him successful and he's doing really well. Got a Lamborghini, 
two and a half million pound house, blah, 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 blah. And he turned around to me once, he said, all I want to be in life is successful. And I'm not talking about money. And he said, one of the gifts that you've got with this podcast is that is that is being successful because you're having engaging conversations. He said, I don't have that. Yeah, I've got properties and stuff, but I don't have this. And it reminded me a little bit when Freddie was saying to you about, he just wanted to meet you. He just wanted to have a conversation with you because that was his currency at that present point in time. The maddest thing, yeah, because there's so many things that happened off the back of that. And I've only just started there to talk about it properly. Fucking, when you said his name, I started crying. I got a tear by my eyes. The maddest thing, yeah, because it's like, imagine how many lives that changed. His mum, like, I'm still in like, contact with his mum. I speak to her all the time. I like, always check in because I always said to him, only thing that happens, I look after your mum. I only met this kid once. But when I offered him everything that day, probably didn't get it at the time, but it was at the same time when I said that like, I just earned my first million, yeah? And I was probably on a bit of a buzz, but then also on a downer at the same time because I said I was in a bit of a dark place. And I turned down to meet him at the start because I said, I'm in a bad place. I can't do it. I can't. I can't. If you're going to send a kid to me who potentially I'm going to meet and he's going to die, I can't do it. Like, my mind is fucked right now. And, but it's me being selfish. And Sank told me, stop being selfish. If you've been, like, it's an honor of saying like this, so do it. So when I met him, I had everything laid out for him. Yeah, I was like a camera crew. He turned up in a Rolls Royce. He had all the clobber on. I offered him everything, but all we wanted was time. And that was what hit me, man. Time, bro. Saying that you waste so much in it. How much time we wasted? So much. Trying to chase money to buy things that can't give us more time. That was it, what it done for me, man. Because I was like, all right, listen, there you go. Let's go on that website, have whatever you want. When I think about it, what fucking stupid thing I've done, why am I offering this kid loads of stuff? He wanted time. He wanted to be there. He wanted anything else. He wanted to talk. And I'm like, that my whole model of how I've based my life has been for the wrong thing. It's to get money to buy things. Money's to buy time. Buy moments, man. And that's what I realised after that. And this is why I do this, because uh, there's nothing more in, like for me is sitting there looking at someone. No offence when I'm watching this. I've got a fucking phone book of people with, from millions to billions, right? Who could sit there all day and show me their car collection, their watches. I couldn't give a fuck. Show me what you've done. What have you done for your community? What have you done to change someone's life? What do you do every day to better someone else? That's what matters to me, man, because the money never worked for me. It might work for someone else. If that car makes you content, then fucking good on you, man. I'm glad you found it. But as I said, when I earned the money, it put me backwards and it made me think, shit, I've been searching for the wrong thing. Mm. When I sat down with his kids and I realized what I'd done and how much I changed his life, shit really got real for me. And I started making me go against people because I'd sit, I've sat down with so many billionaires who just speak to me shit about what they've got. I don't give a fuck, man. I've had all that. Shit, who cares? Who cares, innit? Really, mm. who cares? Like, either way, we're all going to the same destination, innit? And the real buzz was being able to meet this kid and tell this story. That was something which was a life changer for me, man. And the, the time part of it was shh. Time part on both sides. His mum, man. All his mum wanted was time. His mum didn't want nothing. She wanted time from him. Just a bit more time. It's all she wanted. And I've offered her the world, man. She won't have nothing. She just wants to talk about memories with that boy. And that for me is just, yeah. What, what more wake up call do you need than that? Do you remember where, where you, obviously yeah. meeting him for the first time, but then when you got the call that yeah. he passed. Do you yeah. remember that feeling? Do you remember where you were? Yeah, I'll never forget it. I um, funny enough, I was on the on the plane, with my guy, yes, two two days ago, and I said to him, "Yeah, shit, man, I, I can't look at that color no more. I had that tracksuit on the day I found out Freddie died. Do you remember I said that to you? I, I can't get out of my head. Can't get out of my head. It's mad because, mate, I'd, it was the first time I really realized what life was, man. That, yeah, I remember everything clearly of that. I don't know, man, the, the, the whole thing behind it was, 
I remember I forgot everything during this really height of my ADHD, which I feel like was from when I started the business till last year, yeah? I can't get that out of my head that day. Because, and the reason I can't get out of my head, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you, is because I didn't leave it that day where it was just like, you met Fred and it was it. I spoke to him every day, man. And a lot of the time, he was in like, he was in hospital the majority of the time after because it, it got bad for him. And he used to message me a lot. Mm. And a lot of the time, I didn't reply for a while because I was so busy doing other things. And I don't forgive myself for that. Because there's a lot of the time where I was like, once again, chasing what I thought was what mattered. And it wasn't until he died, I thought, fuck. Didn't go up the hospital to him. I didn't go and present him that shoe face to face, man. I beat myself up about that massively today because I didn't push through the shoe quick enough for him to see it because I had other things going on and he didn't see it. So that left a massive part of me, which was like, it made me feel like I had to do more, man. I had to become a better person because as much as I sat down and I'd done the whole thing with him that day, I didn't follow up right, man. I didn't know how to. I, didn't, I don't know. I knew he was, I knew, I knew he never had long left. So I don't know if I didn't want to, get too close to him because it was going to make it worse for me when, he, when something did happen to him. But, bruv, I've never left nothing on the table, but in this one I did. I was like, whoa, I can't, I, I, I just, I couldn't do it. I don't know where it was. I could have went there and just made these last few, I probably could have made it even better for him, but listen, hindsight's a fucker, isn't it? Mm. I, I don't feel like I've done enough with that. And it probably made me feel like I needed to, nah, in my life, change things. But, core, core was it a wake-up call that God sent me, that kid. And I still look back at him in, in certain scenarios when I'm being a bitch about things, and it brings a lot on to me. And I, I never admitted that. I probably didn't give him enough in, the, in like the last part of his life. So, yeah, I do remember the day he died, because the first thing I thought was, fuck, I didn't deliver that, what I said I was going to do to him. That's why I've gone above and beyond, I think. And yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah, it, it's a big regret of me, man. That was, just, it, that was staying me forever, that will. Because as much as I've done a lot to change his final part of his life, and he probably don't look at any different, I could have delivered that shoe to him in person and showed him it. But instead, I was too busy fucking fighting my own battle, my own head, man. Trying to, I was still probably quite selfish. So yeah, I remember that day when he died because I was like, shit, fuck this one right up. I didn't do what I said I was going to do there. But I've got time to fix it with the family and I've got time to fix it by releasing the shoe and making sure that I do what I said I was going to do. But yeah, I think about it every day, man. Definitely. It's definitely a big, big change in my life come from that. Well, the silver lining is from these type of scenarios. Yeah develops your characteristics your personality and then it serves you later on in your life providing that you recognize it and and and, and push on which clearly i can tell from you as mm. an individual and the way you're talking it has um but see like then see then steve sorry to cut in yeah but then i'm young and just come into a lot of money yeah and it was <laughs> such a quick lesson for me it was like lasted a matter of months it was like and that, that's what really spun me. And when I tell my story, people think I'm lying, man. People, when I go, I don't care about money, people think I'm lying. People actually think, like, oh, all right, it's all right for you to say that because you've got loads of it. Nah, it's, it's not that. It's because I realise off the back of a situation how shit life can be and how harsh it can be. The money couldn't save us at that time. Do you know what I mean? When I, if some, when, when I met that kid, there was nothing I could offer him to change it, the situation we was in. And I learned that young. And then when I also realized that I probably missed out on a little bit with him, which the few months, I, I reckon I met him, he died about two, three months after I met him. And I'd, I was in contact with him, but not as much. But then I feel like it's because I knew that I couldn't do anything. Do you know that? Mm. I never thought of it that way. The reason that I probably didn't do enough is because I felt like I couldn't do anything. But all I could do was, after that is realized that it wasn't all about this money thing. More, there was so much more to it. There was a big wake up call for my life. This was. Man. I, 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 I struggle talking about this still. You know what? You know what as well. Like 
as an alpha type male, as a business person, as an entrepreneur, as a go-getter and also a winner, the solution nine times out of 10 with a lot of stuff is if you chuck a bit more money at it That's and it. a bit more, bit more oomph, yeah. you'll convert. Best restaurant in London. Sorry, so we're full. All right, is, you know, whatever, get me a table or they'll run out of these trainers. Here you go, get me the trainers. You can normally pay your way ahead. Yeah. But when you're yeah. faced with a terminal illness, like, you know, uh, Freddie was obviously going, uh, what, what he went through, no matter how much money you had, you could have thrown a billion pound at the situation. It doesn't change a thing. Nothing. And it makes you realise what actually is important in life. And um, when you come from the background that we come from, when you watch these podcasts, sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down. Today, I'm, you're going to look at this and think, fuck, man, this kid's like mad humble because the way that he talks now about me, because that's the, that's the position I'm in now. Like, I thought to myself, shit, well, all that stuff that I've chased all these, all these years and all the stuff that I've neglected is not the, the thing that I needed to chase. The thing that I needed to chase was doing like bigger things and helping out and where I needed to help out. And I've neglected a lot, man. I, I've been a very selfish person when I think about it. Like when I think about it, I've been very selfish. I ain't, as much as I've always been that guy, yeah? That's always give people the opportunity and always been there to help people. I'm still selfish because I've done that for my own gain at the same time. I was getting a good buzzer for doing that. And it's just the last few, few like the last year, I've, I've just changed as a person completely, man. And everything's just sort of coming coming to me like how much of a whirlwind my life's been and i can see why people lose their minds man honestly but these little life lessons that come to you if you don't take them mate and fucking learn off them just trust me they're warnings a lot of them and yeah that's where i'm at in a minute that freddy thing always always brings it back to me and the money the money side of it is it's good and it buys time that's what it does for me now mm. fuck everything else don't care mm. I don't give a shit how big your ass is or what watch you wear. I'm not bothered. The um, look credit low to any successful person, including yourself. I don't believe there is such thing as a perfect individual or even 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 real balance. No, I feel like you have to sacrifice certain things in your life in order to to get to somewhere. It's only when you get there you look back and think, oh, I could have done things better. But had you done it mm. done it slightly differently or changed the way you were, you might not be in this position today. So it's what evil do you want? Do you want this evil or do you want that one? You, you're going you're gonna to feel some kind of regret somewhere along the way. And the book would be shit anyway. I wouldn't be able to write the book and tell the, exactly. like the story if it weren't exactly how this was. It would have been useless. So, mate, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that I can tell the stories. Just when I reflect on certain things, I just obviously, I get a bit of guilt that comes with it. And that's one of them. But I feel like I've put that right and I've done more than enough to be able to be... To be happy with like I served I served that boy well and also being able to tell the story and help other people is a one for me now. Mm. You done a post a little while ago. This is how I knew you had the sunlight and sauna. Um, I think it was it must have been something. Like, it looked like downstairs in the basement somewhere yeah, in, yeah, in it's your my, own it's my gym. Your, your gym, and you posted and it said something along the lines of like how your goals or your priorities have changed. Like it's the smaller things now that get you excited. Mm. So whereas most people in your position, stereotypically would post like a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, a yacht or something like that. Don't get me wrong. All those things are still very, very cool. But it's like other things that are preserving your health, preserving your life, making you feel good every single morning, the ice bath, the gym, the sauna. And that resonated with me again. So talk to me about, Things like gym, boxing, training, sauna, ice bath. How much of an important role does that play in your life? Natural. And it's always going to be there. So it's something that you're doing. So it's actually a natural thing that you should be doing. Yeah. And get like jumping in the cars and all that's all good and all fun. I personally think it's like this shit now, man. I'm not on that. It bores me. Um, my, my main thing, what I look forward to, and this sounds nuts, yeah. My main thing that I look forward to when I'm really going through it and working hard, so I've got a house in Spain that I bought. I can go out to Spain and I can wear fucking just a pair of gym shorts and a t-shirt and flip-flops and walk around my little boy and just walk down to the beach, get a bit of sun, have an early night. That is what my life's about. Go where I don't have to have the whole business thing going on, turn me blower off, be with my little boy, walk around. That's what I really buzz for now. 
And in between that, because I can't have that all the time, I buzz off going to the gym in the morning. I buzz off doing 10 rounds of pad work, straight into doing like a mad circuit. I put myself through torture, yeah? Put my mind through torture every single morning, yeah? I conquer sank every day. Um, that gives me a buzz. It makes me feel good about myself. I like that. I like them ice baths. The, the ice baths are a mental thing. The ice bath's something where you, until you're in that and you're finished, you're thinking, get me out of here. Why am I doing it? You're, an you're anxious walking in the door to go and lift up the top of it, innya? Yeah? For me, being able to do that and conquer that is just, you can't, the, the way I look at it is this. Once I get in that bath and I set a time, I'm going to be in there, if I'm going to be three degrees, five minutes, right? I can't get out of that bath within five minutes. If I get out of that bath in five minutes, before the five minutes, my day's fucked. I'm, I will foul everything. Holding yourself accountable is the way forward, man. Little things. You said you're going to do it, do it. There ain't no, there's, you, you ain't going to negotiate it. You're getting in there, do it. You say you're going to, you say you want to be in that shape and you've moaned about it in the past that you're fat, get in that gym every single day that your body lets you do it and keep going. For me, that's what I buzz off, man. I love it. Like yesterday, I had a bit of a shit day. Um, a lot of lot of business stuff going on at the minute, which it's not always it's not always it's always ups. But some of it takes a lot of thinking process behind it. So when you're thinking all day, you know how it is. You come home and you're fucking like, oh, I come home like yesterday. I was in a bit of a shit mood yesterday, and I spoke to Georgia. I was like, Georgia, I sat and I was really short with Georgia. And I've also got a little bit of thing going on my baby, which I'll tell you in a minute, my little boy. But what I've done was, as I thought, oh my God, I sound like such a little bitch here. What am I moaning for? Get in that gym now. I've trained already. Get on the Peloton. Put on Resistance 100. And go on it for half an hour and do not sit down. I went on a Peloton for half hour last night, yeah? 700 calories. I ironed it out at a level Resistance 100. Uh, 30, out of 33,000 people, I come for 1,200. That for me is a buzz. I got off of that, went and jumped in the sauna for half hour. 20 minutes goes past, get out, it's too hot. Shut up, you're sitting here, do not move. I got out of that, dived in the ice bath for about 20 seconds, and I got out and I laughed to myself. I thought, what the fuck was you doing earlier? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I love it, because it helps me maintain like a... A, a good mindset and now I've got that mindset I don't want to slip from that ever again I don't I don't want to slip from it so that's why I enjoy I enjoy simple things man I enjoy I enjoy spending time with, like I enjoy doing this I enjoy talking to people I enjoy I don't really enjoy going out so much and 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 I used to go out on weekends and take George's shopping and things like that. I don't really enjoy that no more I more enjoy getting up in the morning and going for a bit of breakfast, but walking there instead of driving there. Just all mad things. I don't know what it is, man. I might be going a bit mad. You might watch this thing, I'm going a bit mad. I've just come down to a certain stage of my life where I just enjoy the simple things. I just want that. You know what? Like when you, There's definitely similar, similar alarities, I can't even speak now, between you and I. My missus, uh, I've been with her now, what, nearly 16 years. We got married a couple of years ago. And... She used to say to me when I first got together with her, within the first year or so, let's go out for a Sunday walk. And my response is always the, the same. Fuck? Why the hell when would I, I want to go for a walk? It's a waste of time. Yeah, 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 and she'd be like, no, it's good. For, you know, it relaxes you. You get fresh mm. air. And it's just nice to be together. Turn off the phone, just go for a walk. I'll tell you what, I'm the one that nags her now. I'm Mad, like, let's yeah. go for a walk. Mad. And let's walk for two hours yeah, yeah, with yeah. the kids. And I love it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's... It, there's no purpose to it. It's just to walk and just be in the trees or wherever. I like to walk around. There's a Keston Park of Farmer Park near me and there's some lovely houses around there. And I like just walking around there and like being inspired. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. look all of this. It's so good. That's and it. it's the small little things that it actually is. make you feel so fucking good. It's, as is for an example, yeah? And I, 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 don't, I don't look at myself as famous. So it's going to sound, it's going to sound a bit weird me saying this, yeah? I'm, I'm not famous. I'm, got a, a social media following. I'm not fucking one of them guys, yeah? But I get a train to work every day now. And someone's like, why do you get the train? I was like, because I just want to feel normal, man. You know that feeling? Mm. I've started liking that. Like I normally drive to work, fucking thousand phone calls in the car, da, 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 da. Get to work and that was it. But now I get the train to work, yeah? 
And I like the whole thing. I like mm. having the plan of having to get that time train, being late, having to rush for the train, saying hello to the geezer at the start of the thingy, fucking talking to someone asking about my trainers, interacting with people on the train. That's what I've started doing now. And when someone asked me why, I was like, because I just want to feel normal, man. Just want to feel just normal for a little while. Come out of this mad fucking thing that I've been in. I just want to feel normal. And I do it every day and I love it now. I love going on the walks. I love having a, uh, a train to catch. I love all that. Before it was like, I ain't got no deadline. I do what the fuck I want. Now I've got to catch that train. I've got to be home at a certain time. I've started liking that. And yeah, it's mad. I put all the work in to get this certain lifestyle just to go back to where I was when I first started. But it's where I'm happy. I feel comfortable here, man. Yeah. I like walking along the street. I like people going, mate, what the fuck are you doing here? Do you know when people do <laughs> yeah. that to you? I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, How, why are you here? I'm like, what do you mean? This is normal, isn't it? And they're like, oh, I like that. Sick. That's the yeah. sort of thing I'm on now. Yeah. There's only a couple more things I want to ask you, Tommy, because well, I know you're- yeah, I know, Ask me anything you want, bro. I know your uh, time is precious. I am a massive boxing fan. Doing boxing myself, I know you, you you do boxing. I think your background is is actually boxing, right? When you were younger. Yeah, my old man basically went, threw us both in a boxing gym. I was six and my brother was nine in uh, Hoxton, a bo uh, boxing gym called Crown of Manor. He um, threw us in there at a young age. So yeah, man, I've I've been doing it since I was a kid. I ain't very good though. Yeah, well, I see you on the pads, man. Yeah, but that's pads. Right. Yeah, it's pads, man. It's like yeah, I'm all right. I, I'll do it for fitness, innit? Yeah, yeah. Um, Mayweather. Yeah. It's probably one of my most, you know, it's, look, people like, you know, say a lot of shit about his arrogance and stuff. But for me, he backs it up, you know, 50 and 0, still killing it, still boxing today and still making money as, as uh, doing the um, exhibition fights, etc. Et what was that feeling like seeing someone like Mayweather, Conor McGregor, Drake, Craig David wearing your mallet shoes? Familiar. I knew it. Never. It was the maddest thing. It didn't feel like nothing because Craig David, for example, Craig David was that artist where the whole of Island and where I'm from in the summer, banging it out. You're just hearing Craig David songs. Yeah. The album, it was all, a lot of it was filmed where we come from. Growing up, right, he was massive. Was a, my dad was a big fan of him. And, but when he wore my stuff, it didn't feel like nothing. It was just like, yeah, I knew this was going to happen. I said it was going to happen. And I was so, where I'm so confident, it's just like nothing shocks me with it. But like, he turned up at a shop maybe the other day. Like, he was in the shop on Conley Street. What time does he get there? Like, 10 o'clock, just rolls up to the shop, goes in there, go and gets a load of bits and pieces. It's a nice feeling, isn't it? And McGregor, McGregor done it when he was fighting Mayweather, so that was even bigger. We've had so many big people wearing our stuff, but the thing for me is, and it's going to sound like I'm only saying this for the people so I can be the man of the people. Do you know what I like? You know, when someone's like me five years ago and they stop me and they've got them on, they're like, hey, 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 hey. And they've got no ego. And they're like, bro, I bought your trainers. Look, look, look. And they'll be with a bird. And they're like, thanks, man. You're smashing it. That's the bit I like. That's when it really comes back because a lot of the people sometimes walk past, they like, won't catch eye contact me because they've got my stuff on. I feel like it's a bit of a thing, isn't it? For me, when I see like that builder guy wearing the stuff and he's, you can see he's grafted for it. He's gone out and got it. He's like, yeah, I've got these in every color. That's really the buzz for me out of everything. Mayweather's Mayweather, isn't it? He can fucking have whatever he wants. He's had everything. It's just, it is what it is. It's nice to get recognition from these people and it's good to use them to build the brand forward. But the biggest thing for me is making sure that the person I set out to go and get to where this product is wearing it. And it's that guy, it was me years ago. That's where I get the buzz from. Um, and you shared a story in another interview when you went to America and you see someone randomly in America wearing it. Yeah, you're it's like, mad. Mad. They're my trainers. Yeah, it's mad. It's mad. And they don't know you are. That's the one. That's the one I love. It's like, and it happens a lot, yeah? And especially like with Italians, yeah? I'm like, I'll see someone wearing I'm like, hey, right, bro, bop them, them bad boy. Shut the fuck up, man. They don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> my accent. And that, that for me is the one, man. Like... That for me is is the one I love. That is seeing the the it's the it's the person that's gone out and actually like saved and and because look these these people are wearing a new pair of shoes every day. But see that guy you know that's he's going out a pair of shoes and he's picked you. That's the one, man. Especially when you're in different countries and they have no idea who I am. I love that. But yeah, Mayweather's a buzz. 
and the celebrities all buzz of course they are but it just comes with what we're doing doesn't it if you're if you're if you're in fashion it's getting picked up by everyone but still for me the main buzz is seeing the the working class fella that's the one for me yeah so what's next for you mate We're at a point of the business, yeah, where we have got so much stuff going on. It's like, this first three months, everything I prayed for the last eight years have come in the first three months this year. Like, it's literally all come. Everything. Got some big collaborations coming this year. Three that are signed off throughout the year. Um, the growth strategy is just, it's insane. It's, it's, it's like we're just, we're just moving further and further out. It's like America's just growing. But the, the biggest thing behind it is trying to be happy for it, man. Been through so many stages in the last few years where I've smashed it, but not really been happy. I need to stay where I'm now. This is me. This is where I want to be. Has there ever been a moment, Sly, where you thought, fuck, I'm going to lose it all? I know you mentioned about the thing where, you know, you, you, know, you potentially might have lost Georgia and your, mm. your family, etc. But... Was there any moments in business where you were scaling and you thought, Do you know what, I might have bitten off too much than, than I can chew here. It's actually going to go the other way. No, because that excites me. Because then I proved I can do it again. I was fucking keep going. That uh, it was not really, I've never had that thought. And I think it might be when my mindset is so focused. Probably if I thought back, there's so many times where things have been like, wow, that could have fucked us. But in the, in the, in the moment, I'm so confident that it's going to work i've never looked back like that i don't, I don't really have that part my, my mind where i think oh shit i bit off more than i can chew do you believe in luck um yes and no like i said i said in, in another interview the other day that like i had a bit of luck with a certain a few things like me meeting my business partner was luck like we crossed paths and we could both give each other certain things at the time which we wouldn't have worked without each other so that for me is luck and the way I met him was mad. I got introduced to him somewhere. I didn't never, there was no connection between me and him on energy or nothing where I thought, oh, fucking hell, top fella. And he thought, top fella him. It was like, I heard him say one thing. And then all these months later, I was thinking about, I was trying to get a number for someone. I thought, hey, what about that fella I met at that party? Shit, he might be talking. Let me ring him quickly. And he had a link into production. And that was luck for me because I got introduced to him. That was luck. But I also believe in destiny, man. That's another thing. Law of attraction. 100%. 100%. Like we were saying earlier, you know, like when you have them dance stages, I reckon I've listened to The Secret. Fuck knows. I reckon I listened to it once a week at one point. I could, listen, I could read it backwards probably. <laughs> like that there, 100%. Mindset, man. Mindset. Getting out of that mindset that you've been taught from a kid that not everyone can have everything is a shit thing to think. Circumstances play a big part on a lot of things. And I'm... I really, really, I've sat down with some people who have got so much talent, but they've just not got the, they've not been given the break to be able to, to be able to put that talent out there. Circumstance is a big thing in success. Right place, right time. We're really lucky, as I said earlier, because there's a lot of people that are so much better than what I am or what I do, but they're in places where they're never going to get a break to be able to show that. It's unfortunate. Um, but that never giving up attitude is definitely the way forward, isn't it? Don't matter how many no's you get, you just got to keep going. There's not many people who can take this amount of no's that we've had in our lives and keep going. Because most people probably give up after the first two or three times, don't they? Definitely. I reckon I had, I've had thousands, man. And every single one of them, do you know what I've done? I took the no really personal with every person that told me no. And I used it to fire that, that thing in me. That's really what I've done. I wouldn't have it, man. Still to this day now, like you sit down with me, I'm really calm today. I'm having a really calm day today, yeah? No one can fucking tell me no about something that I want to achieve. I don't care. Do not give a fuck who it is, what they have over me, whatever. I will go out and take what I set to take. That's where this comes from. Because mm. I'm not just saying it, I will do it. Like, I'm literally... Go and do whatever I want. But I'll do it in the right way. But the end goal will be the way I set out to it. And I don't know how I'm going to get there. No idea. But I will be there. That's where it comes from. If you can develop that attitude and you can get that self-belief, 
you'll take it. Thoughts for the taking. And my God rest his soul, Jamal Edwards taught me that. I'll never forget that. He taught me that. It was the first, it was the first, first person that ever taught me that. And he said it to me. And it was a big inspiration for me at the time. Still is to this day. Um, he was doing big things before anyone. And he said that to me. It was like self-belief, man. And I was like, believe in what? I've got no talent. What can I believe myself in? I've got nothing to do. Like, just believe in yourself and you'll do it. And I was like, I left. I never mean, I remember leaving Jamal, yeah? And he was always like, he's an eccentric guy. Like, he had a lot about him. Mm, he's obviously got a lot of talent for him to be that thingy. But then when I started actually in, like, implementing it into things, I realised how strong that is. If you've got belief that something's going to work, no one can stop it. No one can stop it, man. And yeah, God bless anyone that comes and tries to take it off me because I won't have it. I'll literally, I'll take it as far as I need to take it to get what I want to achieve. That's it. That's where it comes from. And um, it's the obsession. It's the ter determination. It's being unreasonable with limitations. It's just about... If it's possible, if it's humanly possible, I'm going to go out and then I'm going to do it. Said I'm going to do it now. So I'm, I ain't going to say I'm going to do it and then just give in because then I've fucked it. Can't do that. I've said I'm going to do it. I've made promises to people. I've given people opportunities and with them opportunities, I've told them where I was going to take them. Who am I to just fucking give up? Nah. Nah, no chance. This is, it was all a fluke at the start and it was, oh yeah, that guy off Tau, he's made this shoe brand. And then it was like, oh yeah, well, he's only good in England where people know him. And then all of a sudden I smashed the Netherlands. Then I smashed America. And then I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Everyone's been throwing all the shade at me all this time telling me like I'm not good enough, yeah? I'm more than good enough to do this, right? And I'm going to show you now how good I actually am. And if I ain't good enough to do this, I'm going to find someone who's better than me and they're going to come help me do it. And since that day... I've just carried on, man. And if someone comes to me and says there's a problem, I don't look at them as their problems. They're just little little road bumps. It's not a problem. I'm not going to stop my day over a little 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 error. I'll just carry on going. I don't really have that part in my brain no more, which has the emotional attachment towards business either, which I really struggled with. Something fucks up. I ain't going to spend a week fixing it. Next thing. Boom. What do we do? All right, fine. We've got a loss somewhere. What do we do? All right, that, that container's gone. Gone missing. Or do you want me to cry about it and tell everyone how unfortunate we are while we're sitting in our fucking big office? Nah, mate. What's next? Let's carry on. Next thing. Bang. That's just all it is. That's all it is, man. And anyone can do it, in my opinion, if they've got the right mindset behind it. Honoured that you came on the podcast, mate. I'm honoured that you shared so many personal stories and I've been motivated and I ho hopefully everybody listening to it it's got something from it. I come up with my own mantra. And the weird thing is, we've actually probably covered this mantra before I ask you the question. Here's the mantra. I came up with this one when I started my first sales company when I was younger. And most of the uh, people on that sales floor were men. So to keep them in check, we live by this rule. Be happy, never content. Mm -hmm. If I were to ask Tommy Mallet, what does be happy, never content mean to you? Um... Content breeds complacency and complacency breeds failure. So content in business and content in life are two different things. Never be content in business, but always try and be content in life. The key to happiness, be content. The key to success is never to be content. You can try and find a balance in between, you've smashed it. If you know how to do that, holler me when you got the answer. I don't have that yet. One of the main things that is, and that's the answer to this whole podcast, isn't it? We want to be happy in life, but we want to be successful. Well, what one do you want more, innit? How mad is that? Yeah. Right. Top man, Tommy. Thank you very much for thank your you time. Thank you so much, brother. I hope uh, everyone enjoyed the episode. Subscribe, do all that good stuff and share it with your friends and family. Be happy, never content. And once again, top man. Uh, Thanks for Tommy. watching. Thanks for having me, brother. Appreciate yeah, it. Mate.